it's always worthwhile to put everything in context and to think these uh, topics are not mutually exclusive. All of them are intended to be complementary. See it a bit like Lego blocks and you're building one on top of the other. So when you're thinking about these topics, always think how does one lead to the next? How does one uh, contribute to my understanding of the previous one? So if we think about the first week, in the first week considered the balance of powers. We looked at the balance of powers between the three branches of government, but we know there's a fourth branch, the sovereign. Well, we looked at the three branches specifically. We determined that the legislative makes the law, the executive applies the law, and the judiciary resolves disputes around the law. Now that separation that we have between these three branches is at the core of the UK's constitutional monarchy. In the second week, what we determined is that we do not have perfect separation of powers. We know that members of the legislative are also members of the executive and could eventually become members of the judiciary as well. We know that the judiciary resolves disputes around statutory law but in the process is also creating precedent and by creating precedent they are contributing to the making of law. So yes they are interpreting the law but they are also in the process of the resolution of disputes, interpreting the law and thereby making law as well. And the executive via its treaty making power possesses a quasi form of lawmaking and a form of lawmaking that is expanding these days. Now, the treaty making power of the executive is in fact of such breadth that the legislative can even see its lawmaking power curtailed by executive decision making. So we have separation of powers but we don't have perfect separation of powers. Now we got that from the first two weeks. In the third week, recall that the branches of government, recall that these branches of government are common to the UK, but are also present within the EU system also. They're not exclusive to the UK. And the UK, through its ascent, through its membership to the Council of Europe, the UK has abdicated some of its sovereignty, particularly around democracy, around the rule of law, and around human rights. It has abdicated some of its sovereignty. Now beyond the Council itself, there are other European institutions, other European institutions that also possess lawmaking authority within the UK. So today's session will be broken into four parts. I'm not sure we'll be able to cover all four in today's session, in which case it'll spill over into tomorrow. The first, we will look at the EU itself. What is the EU? In the second, we'll consider the EU institutions. The EU can be broken down in institutions, so we'll look at their institutions. In the third, we'll consider the legal order that is created by the EU, as well as EU law. And in the fourth, we'll look at the supremacy of EU law within Europe, the supremacy.